Okay, just a quick video. You've seen these before, but I do an actual unboxing and uh, the uh, the uh, placement of the uh, the comfort grip on this can. And I'll talk about that a little bit, and we'll see these um, scenes kind of transform, you know, before your eyes in the upcoming segment where I kind of spray these a little bit. So, um, yeah, always a nice kind of a beneficial um, part of the process in kind of protecting and uh, I don't know maybe beautifying the scenes a little bit more in terms of kind of the resurrection of some of the intensity and values of the inks as they look when they're freshly applied. All right let's see what we have here today. have my gloss Krylon UV resistant clear I've been using this a lot lately with a lot of scenes that I needed to to spray and uh, protect and seal now there's a lot of different sprays out there and I have a completely different video for that um, I've just been getting the Krylon UV resistant I figured a lot of the other types of uh, you know acrylic sprays work just fine um, they all have a little bit of a different characteristic Tough time getting this off. Am I doing this? Oh, pinch and pull. Okay, pinch and pull. Easy enough. Should read it. But I just figured um, the UV resistant is just going to have one extra quality to it that can potentially, you know, be beneficial to my pieces. I don't really display my pieces. Um, I feel that um, you know most dye-based inks are going to be not quite what they call light fast and that's um, resistant to fading when exposed to, say, sunlight, you know, um, or other types of lights, I guess, most primarily sunlight, though. Um, so I usually, if I have something that's going to be on display, I'd recommend, you know, um, taking a photograph of it or scanning it. I don't know who has scanners these days, but, um, and printing out a, a print of your piece and displaying that, you know, especially if it's going to be in some place that's, you know, that's exposed to a lot of light, which, you know, it usually is, you know, people don't display things in closets or something like that, but um, that's why I get the UV resist clear. Um, there's a lot of other ones that I like, though, and um, in a pinch, you know, I've been in places and I've used things like you know, hairspray or whatnot. Okay, but anyways, these types of cans are really great. If you're using them a lot, I recommend these types of holders. They go by different types of names. This one's by Rust-Oleum. You can just type in something like a... Um, most paint stores would sell this type of thing where they have um, their spray paints or their sealants or their, you know, um, I don't know, varnish, you know, that varnishes, those types of um, areas, but... This one, I, I don't like this this top here too much. Sometimes I get confused as to how it kind of goes on to your can, but you just basically just kind of pop it on like that. Sometimes it's hard to get off, which I guess is the point. This one has this little kind of door here, maybe just to avoid, you know, possibly having it in the wrong direction or something like that, but um, they all basically just pop on, and this provides a really nice comfortable handle to spray with, okay? I, I feel that uh, it, uh, it gives me a kind of a smoother um, coverage. I don't know, maybe just for the very thing that I'm not kind of holding this down. I mean, it really should be the same thing, but I don't know. I, I guess just the very nature of this right here kind of gives me, um, I don't know, some a, a good hold on it. And sometimes when I'm spraying too, kind of that mist is going everywhere and it kind of starts getting all over my fingertip, especially if I'm doing several scenes at one time or whatever project I'm utilizing with this. So um, I don't know. And then, I don't know, these things last quite a while. I don't have one for every can that I use, you know, of, of different things. We use spray paints here at the house. You know, my kid has some projects and whatnot. I usually just have one or two of these and I just, pop them off. Uh, let's see. See, sometimes getting it off is harder than putting it on. My last one just kind of, yeah, see, it just kind of comes off like that, so it just kind of pops on and off like so. I, I might be doing it wrong, I don't know. But 
it'll give you some good coverage. Okay, let's take this outside. It's really breezy right now and it's really light, but we'll spray some uh, pieces with this and um, I don't know. We'll take a look and see what this looks like. Okay, this is not great conditions to be spraying this under. It's very breezy, but I found a, a little area on the side of the house that's semi-protected, but I'm getting all this stuff, kind of dust and little, I don't know, what was that, like insect wings or something like that blowing around. Okay, when you get your can like this, you want to really shake it up and get the, uh, the binder and uh, whatever that medium is, you know, the, the acrylic, uh, to really uh, mix up initially. Um, Okay, don't shake it by this handle here, otherwise this handle is, you know, might be compromised in terms of the structure of this, and this might break, you know, not doing it the first time, but just kind of over time. So hold it by the can and really kind of shake that around. Get this aligned up right here and make sure that's not like that or something, you know, get it aligned up with the opening of the spout there, if you can see that right in there. All right, let's let's spray some of these and let's take a look. Oh my god, I hate this wind here. Let's let's do this one. This one first here. This blue one. This one can really stand to uh, get a kind of a invigoration from uh, what this uh, spray can provide. All right, let's see here. Get this aligned so you can see. Let me go half. Way and let's see if we can see a difference between one side uh, that's sprayed and the other side that is not. Get it flowing, okay? All right, let's take a look and see if we can see any difference here on camera, okay? God, that's so reflective. It's very bright out here, too. Okay, let's see. Can you see that right there? I'll take these inside too and continue that on the video, but the, the intensity of that blue from that right side, here we go. See from that left side to the right, so the right side I didn't spray, but you can see that color and that vibrancy and saturation. Quite a change, isn't it? Okay, let's get the whole thing here. It's like doing this, <coughs> It makes it look like it's been, uh, the ink's kind of wet and freshly applied. Look at the the hue on that actually changed from something very dull back to that very bright and saturated blue um, color. Okay, now this one's much more subtle. I didn't put as much ink on this one. It's, these are all the uh, quick scene videos of late, but let's take a look. Let's go from... Um, left to right here. Can you see those trees right in there? And see that green saturation? And look at this over here. Okay. Quite a difference, huh? Even when in the uh, ink um, layers are very, you know, subtle. I get, well, not subtle, but um, there's a less um, saturation on this piece. But you know, when we're talking about the reinvigoration of um, inks and the value and intensity of them, we're talking about a lot of different um, aspects of the ink coming back out, you know, in terms of intensity and value. Value is the light and dark, intensity is the, uh, the um, uh, bright and dull nature of the inks. So you have two things kind of coming around. And it really reinvigorates them and kind of makes them more interesting looking. Now you can do this on, this is glossy cardstock, but you can do it on matte. And there's, yeah, there's some other um, sprays too. There's a matte spray, you know, this one's uh, gloss. I, I want to I wanna get a matte too sometime. I, I like the matte look of a certain um, applications. So, okay, I'm not going to do a right and left on here. I think you get the point. This one will really stand to uh, use it, actually, both of these ones with the real kind of intense uh, Northern Lights thick ink applications or here, sorry about that, if I was doing it off screen the whole time. I just want to get out of here and get out of this thing. It's got this 
wind is kind of tossing my pieces around. And I'm spraying about, oh, about eight inches away from the, from the cards, so. Um, I'm not getting any kind of like build up or something like that of a dripping acrylic on there, okay? But look at that intensity there. Ah, oh, the bright lights. So look at that. That's something. This one almost looks like, this reminds me of like a tie-dye or something like that with that torn paper towel look. Okay. All right. Five pieces, kind of all benefiting from a quick acrylic spray. It's the one thing that you can really do. It doesn't have to be the gloss, like I said. It, just kind of spray sealing um, your pieces can really uh, kind of a uh, I don't know, boost the uh, kind of the visual levels of uh, so much of the uh, different qualities of color, you know, hue, intensity, value, and uh, temperature to an extent, I guess, you know, if you, you know, brighten up the, uh, uh, the intensity aspect, then the temperature of uh, your given warm hues or cool hues, you know, that are much, you know, more of uh, kind of just whatever quality the color happens to be. Okay, let's go back in and get these out of the wind. Okay, back in from the wind, I touched one of my pieces and I removed, you know, a little corner section of it because that acrylic was still wet, but uh, it was so windy I had to kind of box in here and uh, kind of hold my uh, pieces before, uh, before I normally would, but Oh, as my painting teacher used to say, hey, you know, not to me, but uh, to the class in general, you know, our pieces aren't precious or something like that, so don't worry so much about uh, little aspects of them. So what I'm talking about is this little chip came off right there because I grabbed onto it and seen that little piece is on my thumb here. So I removed it, you know, a little piece of acrylic, you know, it was just still wet and I'm holding it with my thumb and uh, just kind of removed it. So anyways, that's the story of that piece there, the removal. I should do this thing where I, you kind of rip the edge and kind of age it, you know, with a little bit of a, I don't know, whatever distress ink on the side so it looks kind of torn and aged. It's kind of interesting. Okay, so anyways, that's the UV resistant clear. Like I said, there's the Krylon crystal clear. There's um, polyurethanes out there. There's um, workable fixatives, um, all kinds of different clear types of um, spray coatings that can protect your pieces. This one happens to be, when it says UV resistant clear, they're talking about something a little bit more archival or whatnot. It's non-yellowing, protective against harmful UV rays, moisture resistant, dries in minutes, okay? You know, it just depends how thick of a coating you put on it. Um, if I forgot to mention what these are, are called here, they're like spray paint um, holders. This one's, uh, um, I, I think it's called like a comfort grip or something like that. But uh, they go by all kinds of different names. Um, I don't know, spray holder, you know what I mean? If you just enter any, any of those kind of uh, search parameters, you'll find them if you're looking online. But like I said, most hardware stores where they have their um, spray paint section will have these. And they're, they're very inexpensive and they last for quite some time. I've had a couple that broke, you know, but we're talking about over years of use and whatnot. So like I said, you know, shake up your cans from the, uh, you know, the can part of it, and not by the holder part, you know, if you want them to last a little bit longer. And uh, they're very convenient to use, and I'd recommend having some of that. I always recommend to uh, people to, you know, spray your pieces. I think just the intensity and vibrancy of the inks really comes out. Even if it doesn't look like it's um, faded, I, I do think that you'll kind of um, boost the... Um, the the colors in terms of that ink you know that value and the uh, the intensity especially of the pieces and then it gives them a nice protective coating on it you know let's say you mount you know your original pieces to a card and mail out to someone you know what happens in tran you know in transit 
can affect it a little bit and uh, you know when someone gets it there's a lot of holding of it and whatnot and who knows maybe it goes up on a refrigerator or something like that for a while and uh, I don't know if people are like touching things you know and whatnot but uh, it can protect it a little bit more and maybe with that UV it can kind of help in the uh, the light uh, the color preservation of it a little bit but just in terms of um, what it can do just for the appearance of the pieces I, I think it's uh, well worth it, and uh, one can like this really can go a long way. I mean, I have a lot of pieces, and I spray them also. I don't know, but even for me, it, you know, one can of that lasts, you know, I, probably over a year, and uh, I don't know, hundreds of pieces really. So, yeah, one coating usually does it. You don't need to go with multiple coatings. I guess you could if you really want to build it up. Uh, into a thicker kind of a finish, but just kind of don't do it at one time, you know, just give it some, you know, different layers. Otherwise there can be potential for getting a little bit of buildup and uh, kind of a, you know, like a three-dimensional little droplet on it that it's dried. Not that it really shows or anything like that, you know, unless you kind of hold it up and take a look, you know, like that. But um, I don't know, you know, you just assume have it kind of fl uh, flat. Hold your can, you know, 8 to 12 inches away. You know, just kind of follow the instructions on the can. But look at that ink saturation there. It dried dull, okay? I mean, it looked okay, but it dried a little bit dull in comparison to that. But look at the stars up there, too. And how those really kind of stand out now a little bit more by having the intensity and everything um, and values of those inks boosted up by the... Uh, that saturation, uh, saturated um, application of it. It's a little bit less apparent on the um, cards where you don't use quite as much ink, but even so, like I said, for something like this, the subtle little uh, brown tones in there really come about, or, I don't know, show a little bit more when uh, you spray it like that, so. All right, hope the video came in handy for you. Um, and, I don't know, it's something that you might think about if you are in a hardware store or, you know, you haven't sprayed before and uh, kind of are uh, on the fence about maybe getting it or not. And it, this stuff does spray, uh, smell, so always do it outside, you know, let those uh, scents dissipate. And I think there's some that are non-scented as well. I don't remember which one those were, but I do seem to remember having um, one type of can that said that, if that, you know, really bothers you too. But um, let them kind of gas off, you know, and breathing this type of thing isn't good, going to be good for you. So, okay, thanks for watching the video.